A pattern that we've been seeing working a lot lately is that day three surge pattern. Today, we're gonna be breaking it down. So welcome back everyone. I am lead trainer with Stocks to Trade and this is a pattern, you know, kind of to flesh out a little bit of what I talk about on the Stocks to Trade advisory. Definitely click that link below. I go live every single day, 8.30 Eastern, every market day, I should say. And it's really rapid fire and I'll call out, you know, week open red to greens, VWAP holds, day three surges, breakouts. You know, I, I really run through as much as possible to get pack as many trade ideas in the time allotted. But a lot of you have been emailing me, DMing me and say, hey, what is it? What's that day three surge that's not in the ebook, which oh, I got plenty of books coming, but this is that kind of newer pattern. So it isn't in the ebook. And let's break it down. So Hook is a great example. And one reason I love Hook so much is fast forward to today. I'm, I'm recording on February 18th, 2022. And we're going into a three-day weekend with President's Day. And we've got a bunch of saber rattling back and forth with Ukraine and Russia. And notice, I mean, the market's getting destroyed. We're getting ready to take out the lows from back in mid-January. If you remember January 2022, very, very sketchy market. I mean, it looked ugly. Then we get the bounce. Everything looked great, kind of going into February. And now here we are again. Listen, I'm, I'm no alarmist, but when you're talking, the, you know, the two of the biggest superpowers kind of going back and forth, markets don't like that. Markets get scared. And that the reason I bring that up is fast forward back to hook. Here it is. I'm recording midday. This thing's doing the exact opposite. So this is what we so often look for. No matter what the pattern is, we always try and find stocks that are that that are disconnected from the market, disconnected from reality, because that brings in that fear and greed aspect. Again, this is something you'll hear me say on a lot of these videos. When we're talking short-term trading, and this might throw some alarm bells, but remember, it's not so much the ticker, the company, the sector, all of that. What we're trying to find is that, you know, that classic fear and greed, you know, the, the Warren Buffett quote, one of the great market quotes of all time, you know, be greedy when others are fearful and be fearful when others are greedy. And the point I'm trying to make is what we're trading is, is emotion, animal spirits, as they say. And you can recognize those trends, especially the biggest moves, whether it be to the upside, in example of Hook, or to the downside. I mean, nothing is better in a crazy, and this may sound very counterintuitive, but I choose my words carefully. Perhaps you should have done the same, Persian. I need to grow out my Leonidas beard from 300. But anyway, um, you know, some of the best trading opportunities are these stocks that break support in raging bull markets and you short them and they get obliterated. And that's always very confusing to people that they're like, wait, some of the best shorting opportunities are in bull markets? Yeah, because when the air comes out, when the emotion shifts, huge moves to the downside. So anyway, it's much like Hook today, opposite, markets getting destroyed, taking out the lows, everyone thinks it's World War III, and here we are pushing highs. So that being said, let's talk about what is Hook and why, okay? So let's go back to day one, and, and bear with me, but day one was technically Tuesday night, but it was Tuesday in after hours, past the 4 p.m. close. So I'm basically combining Tuesday after hours with the market day on Wednesday, okay? Because, because of the fact that, remember, in after hours, most traders leave at 4 p.m. Most traders aren't trading in after hours, you know, from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern. You know, like OTCs don't even, I mean, if you're an OTC trader, you always walk at 4 p.m. because OTCs don't even trade in after hours. So I'm gonna kind of combine that day of Tuesday evening and Wednesday. So news drops late Tuesday. Um, if I remember right, I'm gonna double check this. I don't. I believe this was an HIV or yeah, an amended. Yep, yeah, HIV. All right. I can actually, unlike the TikTok world, I can actually remember things from three days ago. Anyway, they had an amended agreement, HIV related with Gilead. So 
we always love to see that. We always love to see low-priced penny stocks, particularly biotechs, that are tied up with huge partners, okay? Because we know that these billion-dollar companies, number one, they pay their bills, and number two, we know they know how to do due, due diligence, okay? It's one thing if you see some Yahoo Finance article bragging about a, 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 a biotech penny stock that was probably written by an intern somewhere, okay? When Gilead is putting a billion dollar, you know, huge, one of the biggest biotechs in the world is investing in a small penny stock biotech that's always something to be keep be aware of. Plus, it's HIV, it's scary. You'll hear me say that all the time. The, you know, it, again, the scarier the, the, the treatment or, or the disease, or, or, or the cancer, et cetera, the more likely the stock is to move. That goes back to that fear thing. You know, fearful stuff drives stocks, especially in biotech land. So the news drops uh, late Tuesday night in after hours. This is also a low float stock, lower float, 22 million float, still on the lower end of things. You know, typically when we say low, low float, it's less than 10 million. But understand 20 million is still a pretty low float stock. I mean, you look at you know, Apples and Teslas and Googles, they have, you know, hundreds of millions of shares, sometimes Microsoft, billions of shares in the float, okay? When you're talking billion versus 22, it's considerably lower. So low float, good news, great news. Again, HIV tied with a partner, and we get that big gap up. So now I'm looking at that five-day chart, and actually I'm going to break this down on the whiteboard because I think that's the best way to denote all of this. So here's day one, big gainer, holds all of its gains, and then even spiked, beautiful uh, VWAP hold on day one, by the way. This thing chopped, again, remember I'm calling this day one. Um, so chopped around, but then into that 2 p.m. window, which we love, big volume spike, big move. If you were quick, nice day trade, okay? So even if you were 18 hours late, you still had a solid VWAP hold because of the float, because of the volume, because of the news. Then, what I were, but we're talking about the day three surge. So this is what we love to see on day two, is nothing, okay? And this might be confusing, but remember, and, and you've seen me talk about this in other videos, 99% of biotechs do this, you know, <laughs> one one day spikes, they crater the next day, and it's over. And then they never come back, or they come back two years, three years later, okay? So what we like to see with this day three surge pattern is the opposite of that, that sideways action, because what that is doing is that's baiting in the short sellers. It's baiting in the short sellers that think this is going to happen. They think... Number one, I think they're foolish because of, again, the news being, I mean, I know I've said it four times, but it is very uncommon for huge billion dollar biotechs to invest in these. It doesn't happen every day. I'm not saying it never happens, but it's rare. But anyway, they're getting baited in because they think over here is going to happen. Now, there's no trade on day two. That's not what we're looking for, but that's our confirmation. The stock should have been on your radar because it was the, one of the biggest percent gainers on Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It held its gains. It was a VWAP hold. So now on day two, you just got it on your watch list and you maybe you got alerts set, but you're keeping an eye on it and then you're waiting. Comes to the end of the day. Hey, maybe you were working Thursday. You know, a lot of you are part-time traders. You come in Thursday night and you're like, whoa, hey, check this out. Even a little bit of a squeezy action in after hours, okay? This is that, that dark gray is that after hours level. You can see it even trends up a little bit. Let me get rid of some of these. So even a little bit of a perk. So you know that shorts got stuck. They never had a place to cover. They never had a place to break. They couldn't get out break even because it ground up into the close and then perked up in after hours. So then what we get on day three is that break of the highs. So right there in the 220s, 225 basically, you get confirmation. Again, today's Friday, perfect setup for a day three surge because we know it's full of shorts. It breaks that level, which was the panic point for shorts because they're always, if they're smart, they're gonna be risking against those highs because once you break those highs, 
Everybody's happy, everybody's greedy, everybody's buying, including shorts. Remember, shorts have to buy to exit their positions. So when this thing breaks that triple top on day three, on good volume, it's off to the races. And you can see as of, let me jump back to the live chart from the whiteboard. Here we are still pressing the highs. Now let's, I'll go back to the whiteboard to talk about risk, okay? I always say it's not a trade unless you have a stop. Now you've got a good stop right here in basically those low twos, which is support, okay? So if it pulls all the way back to support, the idea has failed, you know most likely the stock's just gonna chop around and probably on Monday, well actually it's three day weekend, on Tuesday, if it pulls back to support and can't you know make that move off of that, good chance it gaps down tomorrow and then just kinda, or the following day and goes nowhere. So the trade is busted. But in that situation, you're basically risking 10, 15 cents a share. And as of right now, you're up, depending on your entry, you're up 30 cents a share. There's two to one risk to reward. And it's also 12.30 p.m. We got three and a half hours. Yeah, or, no, yeah, three. <laughs> Three, three and a half hours from 12.30, you know, until the market close. So this thing might not be done. So keep an eye on these stocks. Again, the components are a big gainer that on day one that, that has substantial news. That's what we want. And it holds all of its gains, okay? Again, notice hook closed at the high day one. Then we want to watch for that short baiting action. Remember what they want. They think it's gonna break down. When it doesn't break down, they're stuck and they have no place to exit. Well, if they're smart, they would just cover for break even, but back to the greed idea, nobody wants to cover for break even. Then you look for the break of the highs on day three. You've got a solid risk to base off of. And listen, if you lose on that trade on these day three surges, if you lose today, there's a good chance there's another one tomorrow, there's another one the next day. Small losses, big wins. Just like Hook, that's how you get consistently profitable over time. So that being said, where did Hook, let me help, drop me a comment. Number one, did you like the video? Are you, were you familiar with the day three surge? And number two, uh, how high did Hook go on February 18th, 2022? Here, here it is, right at the high of the day, market getting destroyed, confirmation of that day three move. So drop me a comment or, or just let me know. Have you been, have you, did you already know about the day three surge? And also most importantly, check out the Stocks to Trade Advisory. Click the link below every single day, 8.30 Eastern. Maybe some of you are already there. Get in there. It's a great resource. You get some, you get a weekly watch list. You get a weekly or a monthly research report and you get access to every day live at 8.30 Eastern. Have an amazing day and we'll see you next time.